Hello, beautiful and loved and chosen, precious human beings. I'm so thankful for you. And I'm so thankful that I get to be a part of your life in the way that I do via YouTube channel. It's truly such an honor and I'm so thankful that you've joined me today. I received a couple of comments and questions regarding doing a video on bullying and what does it look like to remain secure and confident whenever you're hearing many different voices telling you many different things about who you are and who you should be and where you are and where you should be. And so I am so excited to dive into the word on this topic because we're all human and so there's always going to to be someone who doesn't agree or someone who um, is hating and so no matter who you are or what your story is us being confident in our identity that's something we all need to grow in that's something we all can learn even more about and so I want to start off just by sharing a little bit of my story with you when I was about 14 that was really when I just was overwhelmed with the joy and truth of who God is and who I am in him and that he demonstrated his perfect love for me and that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me and wants to know me and have a relationship with me. And so I chose for him to be the Lord of my life and to walk in relationship with him and truly like there's no turning back. He, he, he is my friend, my savior. He is my, my everything. And in that, I can't keep that to myself. <laughs> I want everyone else to experience such wholeness and freedom and truth too. And so I just began to share him everywhere, whether it was the hallways of middle school and high school, or it was the grocery store, or it was in the walls of my home. Um, and then the Lord put on my heart, why not social media? Why not YouTube? Why not Instagram? And so I started letting my captions be his word and messages he would put on my heart. I started making videos about message that, messages that he would put on my heart because my vision is to see people come to genuinely know him because that's only where real life is found. And with that though, Jesus said in John 15, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. And so I began to get a lot of different opinions from a lot of different people. People I knew and people I didn't know. Some people would tell me things on one end of the spectrum and that was, you are incredible. I love you and I wanna be you and you are so beautiful and I look forward to your posts all the time and you're just so inspiring and so encouraging and you're, wow, Emma. Then you had the other end of the spectrum. And the other end of the spectrum was, I hate you. And your eyebrows look like cat pillars. And your nose is too big. And your smile is creepy. And your voice is weird. And your faith is a fairy tale. And you are brainwashed. What do you do with such extremes and everything in between? I was doing a live one time on Instagram. And I was talking to people from all over the world, just in my room, and I had one person comment and say, you are hideous. And literally two seconds later, I had someone else come in and comment, you are so beautiful. And I didn't say anything out loud, I just kept talking, but in my heart, I just kind of laughed a little because I was like, how chaotic and confusing would it be if we allowed our worth to be determined and our identity to be determined by the fickle opinion of man. That it's not what we were made to rely on. Jesus actually experienced the same thing and in honor of this being the week of Easter, the week of Jesus 2,020 years ago, um, coming and living the life that we could not live, dying the death that we deserve, and raising again on the third day after being buried to defeat sin and death, the very thing that separated us from himself so that we could be in relationship with him and experience abundant life forever. Literally, we're celebrating that every day, all day, all the time. But this week, it's, it's just a sweet time to really reflect on what that means, what does that mean to me, just really honoring the Lord and remembering that time. And so um, I want to kind of go back to that week in scripture 
together this week. So um, I want to start off in Matthew 21 verse 9 because in Matthew 21 verse 9 Jesus is entering into the city of Jerusalem. It's the week that it's the week of Passover. It's the week that he is going to be crucified and rise again. Yeah he did. And um, so in verse 9 it literally says that Jesus was in the center of the procession and people all around him were shouting praise God for the son of David blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord praise God in the highest heaven so they are celebrating adoring praising everything about Jesus like it is Hosanna Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Literally within the same week, Luke 23, verse 21, the people kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Within the very same week, people were praising him and people were cursing him. And I think some of us have built up this idea that if we can just be enough, if we can reach a certain standard, if we can just be perfect, <laughs> then maybe then we won't have haters, we won't have people who disagree with us, and we won't have opinions who aren't um, accepting of who we are. Then that'll be, that. so basically the goal is for me to be enough, so then people won't hate me. I'll be loved by everyone. Well, I want to combat that idea with encouragement. Jesus literally was perfect. We, we can't be perfect on our own. We screwed up. So he came, was tempted in every way so he could empathize with us in our weakness, but he didn't sin, no flaw at all. He was the perfect sacrifice on our behalf. And in doing so though, he was still cursed and he was still praised. So that tells me that if Jesus was perfect and he still had haters, that maybe, just maybe, the goal is not for us to be perfect so that everyone can agree with us. I think that we're here on earth for something a little bit more than that. The, the words of people dictating your life is going to drive you insane. <laughs> it's actually a trap. It will get you caught up, confused at where you're going and how you got there. In Proverbs 29, 25, it says to fear the, to fear the words of people. To fear man is a trap. But to fear the Lord is safety. There is safety and security and unwavering confidence when we are relying on who God is and who he says we are. <laughs> Did that just make you smile? <laughs> it says in Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 that God's word, it's like the rain. For the rain falls from the heavens and it doesn't return back to the heavens until fulfilling the purpose of causing budding and flourishing to happen on the earth. In the same way, God's word does not leave his mouth and return back to him until fulfilling the purpose for which he sent it. There is power and freedom in knowing who God says you are. When people are commenting about my physical appearance and my beauty and questioning it, hating on it, making me try and be insecure about it, well, <laughs> I can go back to what God said. Genesis 127, I'm made in God's image. Esther 414, I've been made for such a time as this. Psalm 139, 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ephesians 2:10, I am his workmanship, masterpiece, handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for me to do. That's what my God says. So whenever something comes and opposes it, I'm able to hold it up to the light and actually take it captive and make it obedient to what is actually true. But not only that, when I see myself the way God sees me, I can see others the way that God sees others. There's a confidence there. Jesus said in Luke 6, 27 through 28, you've been told to love those who love you back. Anybody can do that. He said, very truly, I tell you, though, to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you and bless those who curse you. That, that's another level. <laughs> and I can't genuinely do that if I don't first know that God has blessed me and that he loves me and that he is for me. And then I can understand, wait, this is actually an incredible opportunity to love someone when I'm being hated because they themselves don't know how loved they are. They don't know their story. So what an incredible opportunity, no matter what their response is, 
I'm going to love them. I'm going to bless them. I can't live my life in fear of what the response is going to be. Or I can't live my life based on what I think the response is going to be. Because if I'm doing that, then I'm living based on what other people are thinking. I'm living in the fear of man. I am going to love, I am going to bless, and I am going to pray for. Not because they loved me first, not because they hated on me. Simply because my God first loved me. So regardless of what they do, I choose to love them. Paul said in Philippians 4, I know what it is to have plenty, but I also know what it is to be in need, aka, I know what it is to be praised, and I know what it is to be hated on, but I've learned the secret of being content. I've learned the secret of being solid in who I am, and that is that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. After Jesus was blessed, and he was cursed, and he was put on the cross, buried in the tomb, he rose three days later, he defeated sin and death. The, the word in the beginning, John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word, Hebrews 13, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it has all authority. It is victorious. It is unwavering, unchanging. And so how f much more freeing is it whenever you can just rest in the truth that I am who God says I am. And when other people tell me what I'm not, I'm given an opportunity to rest in truth and I'm given an opportunity to love. My dad told me this one time. He said, we were made to worship. We weren't made to be worshiped. When I try and take on the comments of other people, I'm taking on a burden I was never meant to carry. That's why whether I'm told I'm beautiful or I'm told I'm hideous, I can take it to the feet of Jesus and rest in what he's already said about me. His word is freeing. John 8, 32, you will know the truth and it will set you free. You are so valued. You are so special. You are so beautiful. Whenever you choose to declare that Jesus is your Lord, and you choose to receive him as your savior, believing that he is who he says he is and that he did what he claimed to do, what his word says he did, you are a child of God. You have been given the right to be called a child of God. Nothing in all of creation, neither height nor depth, angels nor demons, the past, the present, the future, could ever separate you from God. And when you're walking in the truth that you've been saved by grace through faith, not by your own works so that you can't, can boast that it's from the gift of God, no longer are you living for approval, for love, for affirmation, for comments of praise, but you are living from a place of acceptance, from a place of love, from a place of adoration. You already know that God loves you. He saved you. He's rescued you. He, he's for you and not against you. Therefore, you can live in a life of gratitude and praise and freedom because you realize I'm not striving to earn these things. I'm living from a place of accepting these things. And therefore, when it comes to what people have to say, it kind of gives you a perspective Matthew 7, Jesus said, when you hear my words and you put them into practice, you're like a, you're like a person who stands on solid rock that no matter what comes at you, you're not going to be shaken. We were designed to rest in the secure word of the Lord and worship him. Whenever we try and receive the worship of people, we're going to crumble. Why? Because it's not what we were made for. We were literally made to worship the Father and receive His word about us and live that out. You are so wonderful. You mean so much to me and I pray that this message is an encouragement to you and I pray that you know how special you are to the Lord. Have an amazing week. Be sure and give a thumbs up button and subscribe if your stellar self hasn't done so. And please comment below of how this encouraged you what other material would you like to be covered? Um, and go and follow me on all the socials, 1 Corinthians 13 underscore love. You are so, so near and dear to my heart. And I pray you have the best Easter ever. Bye, guys.